Isis to start with. We did that a while ago. Okay, so I'm just going to go through it quickly, quickly, quickly. So what we said is that you need to know these general reactions where you have an acid-base neutralization reaction, where you have an acid that's bonded to a metal, a metal acid and metal oxide, and an acid and metal carbonate. This is reactions that you did in grade 9. Now I know it's unfair, but they expect you to know it until grade 12. Okay, so if you don't, Please go memorize these general equations. Just know that if an acid reacts with anything, 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 it will always give you salt. Always, always, always. And depends what is left over, it will either give you water or hydrogen gas or water and carbon dioxide. When will it give you carbon dioxide? When you see a carbonate. Metal carbonate, you must think it will give you carbon dioxide gas. Right, so we practice those reactions with a few examples on the next page. Then we spoke about the ionization of acids. What is the ionization? Is if it reacts with water, then it will form the hydronium ion that has a dative covalent bond in it. You remember that? Yes, no, dative covalent bond, what does that look like? Something you must know from grade 11 is when you have a water molecule, sorry. So if you don't know this, draw this at the bottom of your page. If you have a water molecule and it reacts with a hydrogen ion, then because the hydrogen ion has no electrons, no valence electrons to share with the water, but water has two lone pairs that it can share. It says, okay, let's befriend one another. You can come closer. We will share. And a sharing bond is called a covalent bond. But we show that all or both of those two electrons come from the water molecule. So it's called a dative covalent bond. And that becomes a positive ion. When it is an ion, we put it in square brackets and we show it is positive. So that bond there, we call a dative covalent bond. A dative covalent bond that you find in the hydronium ion. That is the hydronium ion. Okay. What are we busy with? We're busy with acids and bases. We're busy showing how an acid acid will ionize in water. Ionize meaning it will form ions. And when it ionizes in water and acid, it will always form an hydronium ion. So we're showing just how or what an hydronium ion looks like. Okay, so and that is called there is called a hydronium ion. And then, good morning, just sanitize, please. And the hydronium ion is the face of an acid. If you see the hydronium ion, you must think acid. Like, if you see Miss Marx, you think science. Good morning, Rita Bile. If you see hydronium ion, you think acid. Okay, so we just showed how an acid will ionize in water. If it is a strong acid, like um, hydrochloric acid, it will um, ionize completely, we say. So we show a, a long arrow to the front and a short arrow to the back, meaning it will ionize completely, meaning you will get a lot of products and very little reactants. If you have a weak acid, it will ionize incompletely, Meaning you'll have very little products and a lot of um, reactants. Okay, so you need to know all of your strong acids. You need to know all of your weak acids. You really, really, really need to know the definition of a strong acid and a weak acid. They ask it, I want to say, 75% of the time. Why can we consider hydrochloric acid to be a strong acid? Because it ionizes completely in water to form a high concentration of hydronium ions. Okay, the same thing with bases. Do you have? No, that's not the notes we are busy with.
We will visit with Essie and Vices. Okay, right. Then we looked at this. Then we took. Then we looked at um, bases and how they dissociate in water. Dissociate means to break apart or break up. So it will break apart a base. Sorry. Okay, so a base is normally a solid, a salt crystal. And in the presence of water, it will break up to form two ions, two hydrated ions. If it is a strong base, it will dissociate completely in the presence of water. If it is a weak base, it will dissociate incompletely in the presence of water to form two ions. Okay, the two of you, I'll send you these notes on the group and then you can fill it in from there. Okay. Um, what else did I want to say here? Ma'am, how do I know what is a strong acid and acid or base? I think here at the end of this chapter, either at the end or the beginning, I can't remember, at the end, I gave you a list of strong acids and bases that you must know. And if it's not there with the strong ones, then you know it is a weak one. Okay, so here you must please, 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 please go study. But we will do so many examples and questions that hopefully you'll know it by the end. Okay. Right. Um, so we were at the dissociation of bases. Again, what is a strong base? It is something that dissociates completely to form a high concentration of hydroxide ions. And what is a weak base? It dissociates incompletely to form a low concentration of hydroxide. Remember, in organic chemistry, so when we're busy with all the carbons, this is called hydroxyl. And when we're busy with anything else, it's called hydroxide. Okay, so there is a difference, even though it's the same thing. Then we looked at the ionization constant. Now, that's the same with the previous chapter. It's just when we break it up to form two ions, then if we have a lot of products, meaning the concentration of the products are high, then we have a high Kc value. If we have little products that form, then we have a low Kc value. Okay, so what can happen is, so this was an example up from your exam booklet, where we said they gave you these two um, acids, and then they ask you, so Ka stands for the constant of acids, and they ask you which one is stronger. So we said we looked at that, and we see this one's decimal is smaller, so it means the Kc value is bigger, so we say that one is stronger because the Kc value is bigger, meaning it ionizes more completely. Um, or you can see uh, it produces more products when it ionizes or something in that manner. Okay. Then we looked at the ionization constant of water. So that is what we looked at. And we said... That will help us to determine the concentration of the uh, hydronium ion or the hydroxide ion. We looked at examples of uh, different pHs from 0 to 14. We looked at if we multiply for any one of them the concentration of the hydroxide, uh, the hydrogen multiplied with the concentration of the hydroxide, you will always, always get the water's constant, 1 times 10 to the power minus 14, okay? And from that, we got the ionization constant of water is the concentration of the hydroxide times the concentration of the hydrogen ion, and that is a formula that will be on your data sheet. So you don't need to memorize that. You just need to know how to use it. We used it to determine the pH of different substances okay so we did a lot of ph calculations and for each one of them we also said what type of indicator will we use okay you don't need to know what color the indicators will turn you just need to know when do we use them for example methyl orange we use when we have a strong acid with a weak base from blue when you have a more or less a neutral substance same for litmus paper, and then phenolphthalein, 
we use when we have a strong base and a weak asset. Okay, now we need to do a practical still for last term, actually, where we will use phenolphthalein as an indicator. Okay, but they're also scheduled to practical for this term. So I just ask which one must we do because they will definitely not do both. So we'll see. Maybe we'll do this practical, maybe we'll do practical with circuits. We'll see. Okay, so we did a lot of pH calculations. I'm sorry, I'm not going to go into them now. Okay, so please go through them again um, when and if you have time. Then I want to go to acid-base models. Okay, so now we get to... So up until there was actually more or less grade 11 work. But we skipped that in grade 11 due to COVID. So now we're going to get to grade 12 work. But you need to know the grade 11 work as well. Okay, now for acids and bases, we have two big definitions. We have an old Arrhenius definition. Okay, so that's an old guy that um, got the definition for an acid and a base. And he said the following. He said that an acid is a substance that produces hydrogen ions in water. And a base produces hydroxide ions in water. Okay, so that is what... Arrhenius came up with. So when we look at an acid and a base there, okay, and we want to apply his definition, we get the following. If you have this acid, what is this acid's name? Is it a strong acid? Is it a weak acid? Is called nitric acid. Nitric acid and nitric acid is a strong acid that you must know. That is called nitric acid. Okay. When nitric acid reacts with water, because that is what acid will do, it will ionize with water. Because it is a strong acid, it will ionize completely. So you have a long arrow to the front and a short arrow to the back. Ma'am, how should we know that it ionized completely? Because you studied your strong acids and bases. So you know that it's a strong acid. That means it will ionize completely. That means that that hydrogen will go sit with water. And you will find that you'll get the hydronium ion. And you'll get a nitrate ion. Okay. So according to Arrhenius def definition, he said that an acid is a substance that produces hydrogen ions. Now ma'am, where is my hydrogen ion? I don't see it here. This hydronium ion can be considered a hydrogen ion. They're like the same thing. Now you'll see some people, like me, I write it like this because this is what actually happens. But some people write it like this. With water at the top, and they say it splits up into this and this. It will also be accepted. Okay, so you can do any one of the two where you show how it will ionize in water so that you get ionize in water to get the hydrogen ion and the nitrate ion. So, Arrhenius definition makes a bit more sense like that, but um, it's not what happens completely. Okay, but anyway, it doesn't matter because it produces the same type of thing and acid. And not so much an acid. Okay, then if we look at this one here, what is this thing called? Ammonia. Is ammonia an acid or a base? It's a base. It's a base because you use it as a cleaning agent. Now, for a base, you need to know that the... Because it is a base, you need to know that the hydrogen goes sits with the base. So an acid... The hydrogen goes sits with water, and with the base, the water gives away a hydrogen. Okay, so it changes. It is a weak base, but you don't know that, I don't think, yet. But anyway, it's a weak base, and because the hydrogen will go sit, we will get the ammonium ion, and we will get, oh, sorry, an hydroxide ion. If we read Arrhenius' definition again, it says a base produces hydroxide ions, it did produce an hydroxide ion, so Arrhenius is still correct. 
correct, correct. Ammonium, we will do it on the next page, yes, but you'll see that it is a weak acid. And ammonia is a base. But ammonium bonded to an hydroxide is a base. It gets confusing. Okay, right. If we check the next one, calcium oxide. Is it an acid or a base? What is your clue for an acid? How do you know if something might be an acid? If there is a hydrogen at the front or at the back with um, vinegar, but if they, it can give away a hydrogen. This one here can't give away hydrogen. Okay. Also, if it has a metal in front, it's probably a base. Metals tend to be more basic. Okay, how can you remember that? What's group one called? Alkali metals. What's group two called? Alkali earth metals. Are they acids or bases? Are they um, metals and non-metals? They are metals. Okay, right. So, group one and group two, the metals are bases. Anyway, so if we have a base, then it means... That the hydrogen needs to go sit there, but that is not what happens. Okay, you can read it in one of two ways. But what will happen is, it's a weak base, you will get a calcium ion. And the water molecule will rearrange itself and it will form two hydroxide ions. Or, the calcium oxide will dissociate in the presence of water to form a calcium ion and an oxygen ion. And the second one is the one that's more likely to happen. Okay, so according to Arrhenius' definition, it doesn't always produce hydroxide ions. Sometimes it produces just oxygen ions. So in his definition, and we can do a lot of more examples, you'll see sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, blah, 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 blah. So two very other clever people came up with a new, more relevant definition. And this definition you must know quite well. It is called the Lowry Bronsted theory. The Lowry Bronsted theory. And he said, or they said, that an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor. Okay, and that makes more sense because sometimes we will get an hydroxide, but sometimes we will get an oxygen. And that should not be the determining factor whether something is an acid or a base. The determining factor should be what does this substance do? Does it give away oxygen? Does it take a not oxygen, a hydrogen? Does it take a hydrogen? Okay, so that is the important part. Okay, now why do we call it a proton? Because a hydrogen, if you look at it, um, the molecule, it has one proton and it has one electron. If you look at the mass, the mass is one, meaning it has one proton and one electron finish. So if we have a hydrogen ion, then it has zero, ele sorry, zero electrons and one proton because a hydrogen ion gave away an electron. Okay, so I'm going to say again, hydrogen has one proton, one electron. A hydrogen ion, a plus, means it gave away an electron. So it has zero electrons. So you can actually just scratch this out. So it only is a proton. A hydrogen ion is just a proton. So we say there, an acid is a proton donor or a hydrogen ion donor. What is a donor? It gives away. 
a base is a proton acceptor, so it takes a proton. Okay, so if we look at that example there, they say we have hydrochloric acid that reacts with ammonia. So this is an acid-base reaction, a neutralization reaction. So we write there, we have hydrochloric acid plus ammonia. Okay, now it will always be, these type of reactions will be reversible to some extent. If you are unsure which one is stronger, will it be a more forward reaction or reverse reaction? Just draw the arrows the same size. Okay, they will not deduct marks for that. So this just means it is a reversible reaction. So meaning we can go forward and backwards. You know that now. Okay. And what will form here? So what you're going to do for yourself is you start with the acid. So normally it's the acid that will determine what will happen. So here because we know this is hydrochloric acid and because we now know an acid is a proton donor means it will split up here to give away that hydrogen. So that hydrogen will go sit there. Okay, so what we will find is we will have the ammonium ion and we will have the chlorine ion or a chloride ion. Okay, so in this acid base reaction, because an acid, due to the Lowry Bronsted theory, an acid is a proton donor, so we know that acid will split up and it will donate a proton. To get the ammonium ion and the chloride ion okay now what we're going to do further now is we're going to make acid base models or acid base pairs or acid base conjugate pairs okay so what we do is the following a reaction between an acid and a base entails the following a proton is transferred so a proton hydrogen is transferred from the acid to the base Okay, so in acid-base reaction, a proton is transferred from the acid to the base, and we call that a protolytic reaction, or I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, protologous, something like that. Okay, now it should sound familiar to you. You have known or heard about the word electrolysis, yes, or electrolyte. That is where electrons are transferred. Now we have a protolytic, I think that must be a proto, but I don't know. Protolytic reaction, proteolytic reaction, that is where a proton is transferred. Okay, right. Then they tell you there, an equilibrium will be reached. You know now what an equilibrium is when we have a reversible reaction and it's closed and isolated system, blah, 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 blah. Uh, equilibrium is reached through the relative strength of the acid and the base okay so if the acid is strong then it means it will have a more of a forward reaction if you have a stronger one on this side it means you'll get a more of a reversible reaction blah 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 the formation of an acid base pair called a conjugate acid base pair will form okay and we're going to look at what that is in a moment so they will form a conjugate acid base P. And then we have sub some substances that can act as a proton receiver or donor. So some substances can either receive a proton or can um, uh, uh, give a proton. And that is called an amphiprotic substance or an amphilite. Where have you heard about an ampho something before? Eh? It must be in life sciences in primary school. Yeah. Have you heard about amphibia? Yes. What is an amphibian sub or element or whatever? Not element. It's a what? Like what's a frog? What can a frog do? What makes it an amphibian? Amphibia. Niakum <laughs> no. Amphibian means it can live in water, 
and outside of the water. It can do both. Ne? Now an ampholite means it can act as an acid or a base. It can be both. Okay, so if something can donate or receive a proton, it's an ampholite. Amphibian? Ampholite. Okay. So what we are going to focus on now is forming conjugate acid base pairs. Okay. So what you do to, to um, form acid base pairs, the easiest way I'm going to show you now, is you look for the substances that look the same. Okay. Can you see that hydrochloric acid and chlorine looks similar and ammonia and ammonium look similar? Ne? You all agree with me like so we are going to bond them like that and like that. Okay, and that's literally what you're going to do in a testing exam. You're going to pair them up like that. It must always be on both sides of the equation or the arrow. Okay, now we, are, we just made pairs. And in this pair, one will be the acid and the other one will be the base. Okay, between hydrochloric acid and the chloride ion, which one is the acid, do you think? Hydrochloric acid. So this we call the acid. And then the chloride ion will be called the conjugate base. So the friend, the one on the right hand side, will always be the conjugate whatever. Okay. Between ammonium, uh, ammonia and ammonium, which one will be the base? Ammonia. Yeah. Okay, now there's two ways to determine that. Number one, the easier way, is if this is an acid, then this must be a base. You can't have an acid and an acid on the left-hand side. If the one is an acid, then the other one must be the base. Or you can look at the Lowry Bronsted definition. What is a base? A base is a proton, acceptor. It says here a base is a proton, acceptor. So if we look at ammonia here, from there to there, what happened to it? From there, it had to accept a proton to become ammonium. So this one is a base because it's a proton, acceptor. And then the other one is called the conjugate acid. Let's just check. Does it make sense that it is an acid? If you look at ammonium and we reverse it to the side, what happened to ammonium to become ammonia? It had to give away a hydrogen. And what is an acid? Acid is a proton donor. So it had to give away that thing. Okay, right. So let's look at more examples on the next page. Complete the following reactions and identify the conjugate pairs. Okay, so we start there with hydrochloric acid. Okay, now I'm going to fill in some um, subscripts, phase subscripts, so that you get used to it, because you must do it in the end exam. Hydrochloric acid, when it forms, it's a gas. And if it reacts with water, what is the phase of water? A liquid, ne? Water is a pure liquid. Now, is um, hydrochloric acid a strong acid or a weak acid? Strong acid. The strong acid's definition is it ionized completely. So you have a long arrow to the front and a short arrow to the back. It ionized completely to form a high concentration of hydronium ions. And that will be aqueous. And it will form a chlorine ion or a chloride ion. Okay, man, just wait, 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 wait. How do we know now a hydronium ion forms? But on the previous page, we had an acid and a hydronium ion didn't form. Okay. When an acid reacts with a base, so an acid-base neutralization reaction, then it will form some products. When an acid or a base reacts with water, 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 then it will form a hydronium ion. Okay. So if you see it reacts with water, then it will form the hydronium ion. 
So then, we, then this is called an ionization reaction. If it forms with another substance, I don't have an example like that now, if it forms with another substance, then it's just an acid-base reaction. Okay. Did you all know that that is the reaction that will take place? Okay, let's just go over it again. You have hydrochloric acid that reacts with water. If you see an acid, what is the definition of an acid? Lowry Brown said it is a proton donor. So that is how you know the acid will split up and it will donate a proton. So that is how you know the hydronium ion will form and the chloride ion will form. Okay, so we did do the one thing. We did complete the reaction and it is balanced. And now we must identify the conjugate pairs. So now we're going to pair them up. We say, right, these two look more or less the same. You know what, I'm going to do that at the top. It doesn't matter if you do it at the top or the bottom or the crisscross or anything like that. Okay, and now you must just say which one is the acid, which one is the base. Okay, hydrochloric acid is the acid. So then we know his friend will be the conjugate base. I'm just going to um, uh, abbreviate a bit because I want to speed up. It's a conjugate base. What will water be then? Will water be an acid or a base? Base. In this reaction, it will be base. How do we know that? Because we have already an acid here, so this must be a base. Or we see that it received a hydrogen to become hydronium. So an acid is a proton acceptor. Chivandre, are you fine? You're frowning a bit. Well, okay, okay. If you want to, you can move one back and you can remove your mask. If it will help with your glasses. Okay, and then the hydronium ion. I, what did I say? Hydronium ion is the face of a... Hydronium ion is the face of a... If you see me, you think... Oh, wow. Hydronium, if you see it, it's an acid. So you don't have to think twice about it. That is called the conjugate acid. Okay. But this thing is like a puzzle, right? If you allow... The classes start at 9 o'clock. Yeah, 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 yeah. This taxi brought him on down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Um, what did I want to say now? Oh, this thing is like a puzzle. So if, um, you have, if you have identified one, the rest is easy. Okay. Right, the next one, we have ammonia. Ammonia, ammonia when it is formed, it is, a, it is a liquid that reacts with water. It can either be a liquid or a gas. It depends... When it's formed, it's actually a gas, but it's at, I think, 800 degrees Celsius. So if you bring it to room temperature, it's a liquid. Ammonia with water. It is a weak, weakish one. So it's a short arrow. What will form there? Well, ammonia is a base. So it will not give away a hydrogen. Ammonia, because it is a base, it will want to receive a hydrogen. Okay, so that means we will be left over with the ammonium ion aqueous, because it's in the presence of water, and a hydroxide ion aqueous. Okay, then you're going to pair up. Those that look more or less the same. Do you have the notes, um, Neva? Okay. So as you can see, I did one at the top, one at the bottom. You can do both at the bottom. You can do both at the top. It really doesn't matter. I just like to have mine separate. Okay, let's identify one, at least one. 
Uh, B gate, tell me, give me one of them. That's an acid or a base. Sorry? Ammonia is a base. So it means his friend, ammonium, and here's your answer, Zanile, will be its conjugate acid. Then water in this reaction, Jabu, will be what? Water will be an acid. And then the hydronium ion, hydronium hydroxide, I told you, if hydronium is the face of an acid, then hydroxide, wait, no, hydroxide is the face of a base. So that is the conjugate base. Okay. Now I want to ask you a question, Ritabili. Here we said water is a base, and here we say water is an acid. How? What do we call something that can act as a base and an acid? Well done, an amphalite. So one of the examples that we know that an amphalite is water. Okay, water can either give you hydronium ion or water can give you the hydroxide ion. Water can act as an acid or a base. So water is an example of an amphalite. Okay. The next one there, sorry, here it had to give, I must remember to change this, there must be a minus there at the top. So it's a fluoride ion. So they tell us here we have a reaction between the ammonium ion, that will be aqueous, any ion will always be aqueous, always, 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 plus the fluoride ion aqueous. Since you don't know which one is strong, is it weak, is it strong, blah, blah, whatever, whatever, then you just make it, your arrows the same length. Because this is not an ionization reaction, this is just an acid base reaction. Okay, so what will happen here, Kamu? Is it possible for fluorine to give away anything? No, so we know fluorine will want to accept something. What will it accept? What will it take? It will take one hydrogen from ammonium, and ammonium can give away hydrogen. It has more than enough. So we will see that it will take. What did you use to answer this question? Okay, right. So I wanted you to answer your common sense, but she said, right, she remembered we just said that ammonium is an acid because it can give away. So here we said it's an acid, it can give away a hydrogen. So if this is an acid, it will give away a hydrogen to fluoride. Okay, so that means we will get the ammonia ion aqueous and we will get hydrogen fluoride. Aqueous. Okay, the next thing we do is we pair them up. We buddy them up. So that, uh, how do we do that? We look at those that look more or less the same. What can go to what possibly? Okay, so if we look at ammonium, we see it becomes ammonia. Ammonia, ammonia. How does it do that? It gives away a hydrogen. What is something that gives away a hydrogen? It is an acid, a proton donor. So this is called an acid. So this is its conjugate base. Then it means the fluoride ion must be the base. And it means hydrogen fluoride must be its conjugate acid. Okay. Now... This is actually an acid-base reaction in reverse that I gave you. 
Okay? Normally, in a test run exam, they'll say hydrogen fluoride reacts with ammonia and it goes that way. Okay? I just made it a bit difficult, so I swapped them around. You must know, or I expect you to know, that hydrogen fluoride is a strong acid. Okay? How do you know that? It is a hydrogen, so it's an acid, bonded to halogens, then group 17. If you have a hydrogen bonded to fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, it will give you a strong acid. Okay, the next one, you have sulfuric acid that's bonded to water. So sulfuric acid, that is a gas. If it bonds with water, that is a liquid. Is sulfuric acid strong or weak at Tejo? It's strong. It's very, very strong. It is very corrosive. It will eat away your flesh. Sulfuric acid. Right. Because it is an acid, it will donate a proton. Now, we did this last, last year, yes, but I don't think you can remember. It donates one proton at a time. So, it will give away one proton... So that you will find the hydronium ion aqueous and you'll find hydrogen sulfate ion aqueous. So it donates one proton at a time. Yes? Oh, sorry, it's the other way around. Thank you. Oh, I don't know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You can just make them equal length if I um, mess with your plants, but because this is a stronger acid, it ionizes completely to give a high concentration of hydronium ions. Right. So if we make buddies here, we will get these two and these two. Sulfuric acid will be the acid. So his friend will be the conjugate base. Water in this reaction will thus be a base. So the hydronium ion will be the conjugate acid. Okay, then they say we must start with this hydrogen sulfate ion. And it reacts with water again. To give you, so it will split up there, to give you the hydronium ion and the sulfate ion. Again, you pair them up. Oopsie. Right, now, Karabu, I want to know. This hydrogen sulfate, is it an acid or a base, and why? Yes, why is it an acid? Yes, it is an acid because if you see what will happen to it, it will give away a hydrogen. An acid is a proton donor. Perfect, Karabu. So it's an acid, thus water is the base, thus the hydronium ion is the conjugate acid, and the sulfate is the conjugate base. Okay, right. Now, Mary, from there, can you please give me another ampholite that exists? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> yes, here, yeah, yes. <laughs> Sorry? H3O. H3O. No, here it acts as an acid and an acid. It's always an acid. 
Yes, the hydrogen sulfate ion. Here you can see it acted as a base, and here it acts as an acid. Okay, so this is the next one I want to write down is the hydrogen sulfate ion can either receive a hydrogen to become sulfuric acid or it can lose a hydrogen to become the sulfate ion. Okay, so that is another example and I'm just going to highlight them. That is another example of an amphilite. Okay, now, they love to ask amphilites in the exams. And please be careful. Don't always just write down it's water. They will ask one of two questions. They'll either ask, write down an amphilite in this reaction. So you must be very specific because in this reaction, there is water, but water didn't act as an amphilite. Water acted just as a base. Okay, or they can say, in general, give me an um, uh, ion or a molecule that can act as an amphibite. Okay, then you can give water. Right, now the examples of amphibites um, is the hydrogen carbonate ion. Rita Billy, are you awake? The hydrogen carbonate ion can either form carbonic acid, so it can accept a hydrogen, become carbonic acid then it acts as a base or it can donate a hydrogen and form carbonate ion and then you have two more amphilites the one is hydrogen phosphate ion it can form the phosphate ion so then it acts as an acid Or the hydrogen bihydrogen phosphate ion can either give you, can donate a hydrogen to become a hydrogen phosphate ion, or it can, oopsie, sorry, accept a hydrogen to become phosphoric acid. So both of these are amphilites. Okay, but they the hardly ever ask this one. But maybe this year is the year. They, the other three, these three, they ask more often. Okay, so these are all amphilite amphilites. Next page. Okay, these are just informal definitions. Okay, please don't use this as formal definitions. This is informal definitions of acids and bases. Strong acids give protons away easily. Weak acids do not give a proton away easily. So it means it will ionize incompletely and a strong one will ionize completely. Okay, so it says that if an acid gives a proton away easily, then its conjugate base does not accept a proton easily, and vice versa. Okay, so if we look at an example here, um, Zanelli, give me an example of a strong acid. Okay, good one, yes. Hydrochloric acid, if that ionizes... So ionized means it reacts with water. Because it's strong, it will be a long arrow to the front, short arrow to the back. You know that now that hydrogen, uh, um, an acid, is a proton donor. So it will give away a proton. And that will form the hydronium ion. And it will form the chloride ion. Now, if I were to make conjugate acid-base pairs here, 
like that. I'm just going to do the one because I just want to show something here. Yeah? Hydrochloric acid is an acid. So the chloride ion is its conjugate base. Right. Now we said that the hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, meaning it will easily give away its hydrogen. Gone. But that means that its conjugate base is a weak base. And it does not want to accept a hydrogen. Okay, now that makes sense to us. Okay, why does it make sense? And I want you to imagine now inside a container. These things are floating around. Do, 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 do. Now this thing breaks up and you get a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion. Now there's two things that can take that hydrogen. It's either this water to form the hydronium ion or it is the chloride ion. Okay, so there's two things that can accept that hydrogen that is given away. Either the water or the chloride ion. Now we want the water to accept it to form a hydronium ion. If the chloride ion accepts it, then there's actually no reaction that takes place because you just get the hydrogen chloride again. Okay, so I'm going to say this again. A strong ion, a strong acid gives away its hydrogen easily. Then its conjugate base is a weak base, meaning it does not accept the hydrogen easily. Okay, now this is just an introduction to a concept we'll do on the next page. Okay, so you just need to note the back of, your ba uh, back of your head. If this is a strong acid, then this is a weak base. Okay, so one is strong, the other one is weak. If we look at a weak acid, for example, um, Jovandra, can you give me an example of a weak acid? No, that is a strong acid as well. Something that you can eat or drink. Something that is a common household product that South Africans like to eat over chips. Sauce. What sauce? It's a colorless sauce, but not odorless. This is a sauce sauce, but a liquid. Shh, Jumandre. It's vinegar. Ethanoic acid is an example of a weak acid. Ethanoic acid. Okay, that's an example of a weak acid. That is a liquid, but oh, we're not looking at um, phases now. When it ionizes in water, it ionizes incompletely because it is a weak acid, so it means it will form very little hydronium ions and very little acetate ions. Yes. Ethanoic acid. Eth because there's two carbons. Anoic acid because it's part of the carboxylic acids. Ethanoic acid. Right. So if we make acid base pairs here, ethanoic acid is a weak acid. Very, 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 very weak acid. So it means its conjugate base is a very strong base. Okay? So, if you're done writing. What this basically means is the following. If there is a chance that this hydrogen can be given off, can be donated, because an acid is a proton donor, and this hydrogen flies here in the air, it can either be given to water or back to the acetate ion then that hydrogen will most probably go to the acetate ion because it wants to take it. Then if this is a weak acid, then this is a strong base. Then it takes that hydrogen again. And that is why you won't form a lot of hydronium ions. That is why you have a short arrow to the front. Okay. You don't need to know it in that depth, 
All you need to know is that if this is a weak acid, then this is a strong base. If this is a weak acid, then you'll get a um, very little hydronium ion. Okay. Right, so here I just again want to look at how do the strong acids and bases ionize and dissociate. So we're going to go through this very quickly. So here we have three examples of strong acids and three examples of strong bases. Okay, what is this first acid called BK? HCl. Hydrochloric acid, it ionizes, so it reacts with water. Strong acid to form an hydronium ion and a chloride ion. What is the next one's name, beast? Thank you, Jabu. Nitric acid. It's an acid, it's a proton donor, it's a strong acid, it will ionize completely to give a high concentration of hydronium ions and the nitrate ion. What is H2SO4's name, Jabu? Donkey BK. Sulfuric acid. Was it BK? Yes. Yes. It is sulfuric acid. Okay. Now, I just said sulfuric acid will ionize one hydrogen at a time. Okay. But what we are going to write down here is the net reaction. Okay. So, I quickly want to pause there. What we had here is the step one and step two of the ionization of sulfuric acid. It ionizes in two steps. So here you can see step one, it gives away one, and then step two, it gave away another one. How do I know it will ionize in two steps? Because there is a two there. That two means it is a diprotic acid. What is Di means two. Diprotic, it gives away two protons. Because it is a diprotic acid, it will ionize in two steps. This here, hydrogen chloride, can give away one proton, so it's called a monoprotic acid. Like if you say someone is a moron, you say they have one brain cell, Monoprotic acid can give away one hydrogen. Never tell someone that. Need is really like. Say? Um, you can tell them they are losing one brain cell at a time, but they don't have one brain cell left, hopefully. Okay, right. So. Here we have two monoprotic acid because they can give away one hydrogen. Here we have a diprotic acid because it can give away two hydrogens. So they need to well, ionize it in two steps. But here we are just going to write the net reaction. Okay. The net reaction meaning both, both steps together. So it will form two hydronium ions and the sulfate ion it's not balanced yet because it will give you two hydronium ions you need to have two water molecules okay so what how would you know that if you see a two there it means there must be a two in front there and a two in front there two 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 diprotic <coughs> sorry if we look at the strong bases, it will dissociate in water. So in the presence of water, it will dissociate. Um, Rita Billy, what is this thing's name? 
Well done. Lithium hydroxide. The next one, Akamu? Sodium hydroxide. And the last one, Katlejo? Potassium hydroxide. Good. Okay. So, the acids ionize in water. So, it means it reacts with water. Ionization means it reacts with water. The bases dissociate. So, it's in the presence of water. Okay. So here I just thoroughly explain monoprotic and diprotic acid. Acids. Okay. What is a monoprotic acid? It can give away one hydrogen. What is a diprotic acid? It can give away two hydrogens. We also get a triprotic acid, phosphoric acid, but we don't use it that often. They like to ask these ones. So go study those definitions. What is a monobasic? Mono means one, so it can monobasic means it gives one hydroxyl, a hydroxide, and dibasic it gives away two hydroxides. Okay. Then a concept that they will try to trick you with is strength versus concentration. Okay, so here we have question most probably and they'll say which one is stronger and then they'll give you concentrated vinegar and diluted hydrochloric acid then you must know strength has to do with the type of substance nothing to do with the concentration okay strength refers to how easily it ionizes or uh, uh, dissociates meaning the strength of the acid or the base how easily it ionizes or dissociates, that is the definition of an acid or a base. A strong acid ionizes completely, blah, 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 blah. And concentration has to do with how much water it contains. Okay. Right. Then the next concept. Hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. Okay, now to me, this is a very, very important concept, especially for you living in Paris. Um, and if you want to continue to live in Paris and help us with our water situation here. Okay, you all know our water, you cannot drink. Ne? You will die. Okay, so what the department does is... Our water comes, you come, does it come from the river? I don't actually know. 
Anyway, but it, it comes from somewhere that it is polluted. And then they try to rectify this polluted water by adding in different salts. Okay, so you all know that sometimes you drink water that has chlorine in it. Why do we add chlorine in it? We add actually a chlorine salt, some type of salt that has chlorine in it. And that chlorine neutralizes the water. Okay, now that process where we neutralize it is called hydrolysis. And what is the definition of hydrolysis? It's a reaction of salt with water. Okay, so the question most probably in your exam will be, there is a dam that is polluted. They won and you test the pH and the pH is 3. So it's very acidic. Um, what substance must they add to the water to neutralize it? Okay, so that is what we're going to look at. We're going to look at how different salts will neutralize different liquids. Okay, right. So it says here, salt of a strong acid and a strong base. For example, sodium chloride. Okay, so they say you have water and you're going to add sodium chloride to it. Will it help the water? Will it change the pH? Will it solve your problem? Okay. So what you do then is you say, if I take sodium chloride, that is a salt, and I show how it will split up into its two ions. So meaning it will form the sodium ion aqueous and it will form the chloride ion aqueous. And that will dissolve in water. Water is a liquid. Water will split up into two ions. Now I'm going to write first the negative ion, hydroxide ion, for a specific reason. And the hydrogen ion. So that is what will happen more or less if you add that salt to water. Those ions will be floating around in the liquid. And these two will find each other and they will form sodium hydroxide. These two will find each other and they will form hydrochloric acid. Right. Um, where am I with my questions? Mary, I think it's... Is it sodium hydroxide. What do you know of sodium hydroxide? Yes, it's a basin. Is it strong or is it weak? It's very strong. So this is a strong base. You need to write very small here. This is a strong base. Meaning it dissociates completely. That's a definition of a strong base. And if it dissociates completely, it means it has a high concentration of hydroxide ions. Mary, what do you know of hydrochloric acid? It is a strong acid. What is the definition of a strong acid? Yes. Strong acid means it ionizes completely, meaning it produces a high concentration of hydrogen ions or hydronium ions. Okay, so what that means is if you add this salt to the water, you will just get a lot of these ions. They will not form to produce sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid because they will just break up into the ions again. That is what the definition is. It will dissociate completely. It will ionize completely. 
meaning you'll just have a lot of ions that won't form molecules. And if they won't form molecules, it means they won't take out of the water the bad stuff that we want to eliminate. Okay? It means that for these two, the concentration of the hydroxide is more or less equal to the concentration of the hydronium. Meaning the pH of the substance that you add, the pH of the thing that you add to neutralize, is just 7, so it will not neutralize. So if you add normal table salt to your water, it will do nothing to the pH. Because you just added a neutral substance to it. Okay, so that will not help us. The next one. If you add a strong acid and a weak base, or a salt that comes from a strong acid and a weak base. Okay? So if we look at the example, um, um, ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride will split up to give you ammonium and chlorine. And if that happens in the presence of water, you will get an hydroxide ion and a hydrogen ion. Okay, so if we look at them here, this will form ammonium hydroxide and this will form hydrochloric acid. All right. Now, what can you tell me about ammonium hydroxide and um, zanili? Now, I'm not sure if it's a weak or a strong base. Um, go to your last page. Okay, can you see here we have our bases with the OH? Do you see it there? No. Okay. So OH tells you it's a base and it's weak because it is not group 1 or group 2 that is bonded to the OH. So this is a weak base. <coughs> and what is the definition of a weak base, Zanelli? Yeah, I've said this like a million times. A strong base dissociates completely. A weak base? Page back in your notes. Uh, yeah. Uh, he so. dissociates incompletely. To form a low concentration of hydroxide ions. These definitions you must know very, 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 very well. Okay. Uh, where am I? So, okay. So, uh, is a weak base meaning it dissociates incompletely. Meaning you have a low concentration of hydroxide ions. Okay. Now, what they want you to add in the end exam. With the wording there. They want you to add and say that if it, uh, rather than saying it has a low concentration of hydroxide ions, they want you to say that the ammonium ion removes, hi, removes hydroxide ions from the solution. So that is the wording that I, they want you to use. You can say it is a weak base. So you can say dissociates incompletely, meaning, and that's the part that you'll get the marks for, ammonium removes hydroxides from the solution. Okay? If we look at 
Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, meaning it ionizes completely, meaning you have a high concentration of hydro, um, hydrogen ions. Okay, so if we put these two things together, we see that if we compare the hydroxide ion with the hydrogen ion, the hydroxide ion will be much, much less because the ammonium removed it, the ammonium bonded to it. So you have less hydroxide than hydrogen. So it means the pH will be smaller than 7. So you're adding an acid to it. Okay. Now when will this salt make sense? When we have a very basic solution that we added to or a very acidic solution that we added to? Chivandre? Yes, so we have the salt. When must we add the salt? Must we add it to a solution that's very basic or very acidic? Basic. Very basic because we want to neutralize it with an acidic substance. Okay, right. Um, you can see I, I printed these two in bold. It's because these two are the two that they ask most often in an exam. And I use the one specifically that they use in exams. The specific salts they ask. Okay, right. The next one is a, a salt of a weak acid and a strong base. So obviously we're going to add this when we have a very acidic solution. Okay, so if we look at this base, uh, this salt here, sodium carbonate, it will split up into two sodium ions and a carbonate ion. Why two sodium ions? Because you can see there's a two there at the bottom. If we look at water, it will split up into hydroxide and hydrogen. But careful we must have two water molecules so that we have two hydroxides that bonds with the two sodiums and that we have two hydrogens to form two or that forms carbonic acid okay so these two will bond together to give you two sodium hydroxide ion uh, molecules and sorry these two will bond together to give you carbonic acid. Okay. Uh, BK, what can you tell me about sodium hydroxide? It is a strong base. What is the definition of a strong base? It associates completely, meaning you have a high concentration of hydroxide ions left in your container. Please tell me about carbonic acid. Mm -mm. You find it in your physical drinks. It is a weak acid. What is the definition of a weak acid? Yes, it ionizes incompletely. Okay, meaning you have a low concentration of hydrogen ions. But Jabu, that is not what they want us to write in the end exam. What do they want us to write when we have incomplete whatever? They want us to say what? Yes? 
Yes, so you must say here, what are we busy with? We're busy with carbonic acid. There's carbonic acid. So you're going to say the carbonate ion removes hydrogen ions. Okay, so you're going to say carbonate removes hydrogen ions from solution. Okay, so if we compare those two and we compare the hydroxide ion with the hydrogen ion, which one will be more um, retabile? Yes, he said carbonate removes hydrogen ions. My question is, this one, these two ions here, which one will be more? Well, a higher concentration. Which one's concentration will be bigger? No. Because it that removes hydrogen ions from the solution, you have less of that and more of that. So your arrow will look like that. So where will your pH be more or less, Kamu? Greater or smaller than uh, 7? Yes, it's greater than seven. Okay. I'm going to explain the last one in a moment. I just want to show you. Okay, let's say you have here a container. Okay. And they tell you the pH of the liquid in this container is very acidic. Meaning... Let's say the pH is more or less 10. Oh, not acidic, basic, sorry. Basic. Okay. If the solution is very basic, the pH is high, then that means the concentration of the hydroxide ions is more than the concentration of the hydrogen ions. Now, we cannot drink this. Okay. We want to drink this. We want to rectify the pH. We want to get the pH to 7. We want to make it lower. So we need to add an acidic substance. But you can't just say, okay, I'm just going to add like a lacquer like a hydrochloric acid to it. Wait, 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 wait. You die. Okay, so you're going to add the So what we say is, okay, if that is the case, then that means we have a lot of hydroxide ions floating around in here. We probably have a hydrogen ion or two there as well, but we have more hydroxide ions floating around. And we want to eliminate those hydroxide ions. We want them to react with something so that they are gone, so that we have equal number of hydrogens and hydroxides. Okay, so that is the aim of the game. So they say we must add now a salt to that. Okay, so in our case, we want to add a salt from a strong acid and a weak base. For example, ammonium chloride. Okay, because what will ammonium chloride do? Ammonium chloride will break into ammonium ions and chlorine ions. Okay, so our options here is that the hydrogen will bond with the chlorine and the hydroxide will bond with the ammonium because opposites attract. Okay, will that happen is the question. That is what we're busy with. Okay, so if we look here, so we have water, hydrogen and hydronium, a hydroxide. So it will give you hydrogen, a hydroxide and hydrogen. Our question is, will this molecule form? Will hydrochloric acid form? No, because it is a strong acid, meaning it will ionize completely, meaning 
you will just have your ions back. The concentration of that will be high. It will dissociate. It will break apart. So you don't even have to mention that part there. Okay? What you do have to mention is you'll have to say ammonium that will react with our hydroxide will take place because ammonium removes hydroxide ions from the solution. That means at the end of the day, when this is removed, gone, 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 it removes that hydroxide from the solution. Then the concentration of the hydroxide ion will be more or less the concentration of the hydrogen ion. And then the pH will be more or less 7. Okay, so that's at the end of the day. Sorry, I, I wanted to write that last. So what will happen there? That means the concentration of our hydroxide will first be, um, it will decrease, we can say. Uh, I just want to check if that's all that I want. So ammonium removes hydroxide, so the hydroxide ion will decrease, yes. Then the two concentrations will be equal and then the pH will become more or less 7. Okay, are you with me? So that is what we've, that is the aim of the game. That is in a question what we will answer. Here we are just looking at the salts individually. And we're saying, right, if we have the salt, what pH is that salt in water? Okay, this pH is less than 7, so we can add it to something that will be greater than 7 and it will neutralize each other. Okay, should I make my? Sharp, because you guys must save the world, ne? The next war will be on water. Why? Because we need water. Save our land. It's in your hands. No pressure. It's too late for me. I'm too old. I'm just teaching you. Okay, right. The last one there. And then we are done for the day. Because I can see you guys are near death, actually. Um, all right, so uh, if we look there at ammonium acetate, is that iron's name? So you have um, ammonium uh, acetate, ammonium, and but you say this one reversible or reverse, you say ammonium acetate. That is how you pronounce it. So that will split up into the acetate ion and the ammonium ion. And water will split up into the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion. Okay, so that water there is the water that you find in the container. Okay, you can see that what we will get there is we will get the acidic ion, uh, the acidic molecule. Oh, sorry, not acidic, the acetate molecule or ethanoic acid, and you'll get ammonium hydroxide. Okay. Acidic acid. Um, where am I with my questions? Acidic acid, strong weak. It is a weak acid. What is the definition of a weak acid? It ionizes incompletely. Okay, so it ionizes incompletely. That means it has a low concentration of hydroxide ions. Meaning, not a low concentration. We want to say it removes... You want to say the acetate ion removes hydrogen. Um, Karabu, what do you want to tell me about ammonium hydroxide? Yes, and what's the definition of a weak base? It, you know, it dissociates. Incompletely. Mary, 
So if we say dissociates incompletely, what is the wording they want us to write? Dissociates incompletely. Yeah. What removes? The ammonium ion removes what? It removes hydroxide ions. So this salt also won't help us. Because both of them will remove stuff. And we don't want that. We want only one thing to remove so that they can be equal. We don't want both to be removed. Okay, so that means that the concentration of the hydroxide ion is more or less the same as the concentration of the hydronium ion. So it means this salt's pH is more or less 7. So it won't help us to neutralize the water because we're just adding a neutral substance.